CBS News, the Carter administration has revealed some details of part of its proposed national health insurance plan. Neither Senator Kennedy nor the AMA are pleased. I'm Jerry Landay reporting on the CBS radio network. The Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare, Joseph Califano, revealed the outlines in New York of what is termed the first phase of the Carter plan. It would spend up to $15 billion in coverage, limited only to what Califano termed catastrophic illness, as well as expanding Medicare and Medicaid coverage for the poor and aged. No substantial amount would be spent for more than three years, and Mr. Carter would make the limited plan contingent on congressional OK of his program to contain spiraling hospital costs. Senator Kennedy, who favors immediate passage of a comprehensive health coverage bill, termed the Carter approach disappointing and piecemeal. Adding uh, uh, a $15 billion uh, new program of benefits without the other kinds of system changes is going to mean uh, additional inflation into the uh, system and effectively is going to uh, bankrupt uh, middle America. Dr. James Sammons of the American Medical Association opposed the Carter plan as going too far. He's obviously trying to use a highly emotional phrase, catastrophic insurance, to generate additional support for an ill-founded, ill-advised, unworkable, totally complicated, and unnecessary piece of legislation that the administration is presently proposing. Califano defended the first phase package as all Congress can digest and the country can afford at this time. More after this. Mom, why didn't you show Mrs. Wood the ring Daddy gave you for your anniversary? Because all she'd look at would be the brown spots on the back of my hand. And guess my age. Oh, Mother, if you're that sensitive, get some porcelana. Some what? Porcelana. It's a medicated cream that helps fade age spots. It sure worked for Bob's mother. Really? Porcelana. Works on age spots, brown spots, and freckle spots. Just rub it in. Watch spots start to fade. Porcelana medicated fade cream actually works to lighten brown patches and spots that come not only with age, but during childbearing years, too. Porcelana is available at cosmetic counters everywhere. Porcelana, you say? I'll get some. It'll help bring back the natural tone of your skin in just six weeks. Porcelana. Just rub it in, in, in. Watch spots start to fade, fade, fade. Porcelana medicated cream. Use only as directed. The members of the United Nations Security Council have passed a resolution condemning Israel's 12-year-old occupation of Arab territories and creating a special commission to investigate Israel's settlement policies. The United States abstained, did not use its veto power to kill that resolution. As both Israel and Egypt prepare to put finishing touches on peace treaty documents to be signed Monday, Israeli television reports Prime Minister Menachem Begin will order a major new construction drive to set up 10 more Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank claimed by Jordan. There's no confirmation. Bargainers for the Teamsters Union today turned down the initial offer by the trucking industry on a new three-year contract in the first major test of President Carter's voluntary 7% wage guideline. The rejection had been expected. Yesterday, the head of the Teamsters Union, Frank Fitzsimmons, declared it would not be right to hold down workers' wages while corporate profits are soaring. Today in Washington, our Robert Russell deputy director of the President's Council on Wage Price Stability, warned of the ripple effect an excessive Teamster settlement would have on other negotiations. Far and away, the most important reason why a 7% settlement for Teamsters is so crucial to our fight against inflation is because of the demonstration effect, uh, the, the impact it'll have on subsequent uh, settlements. If all settlements in the country, if all wages went up by 10% instead of 7%, then the uh, rate of inflation would be uh, at least uh, two percentage points higher. The current Teamsters contract expires the end of the month. Now this. Hi, here's one of my new favorites. Almanetta, gentle Almanetta, Almanetta for Manischewitz wine. Has a kind of nutty taste, has a kind of gentle taste. Nutty taste, gentle taste, nutty taste, gentle taste. Gentle taste. Gentle taste. Almanetta, Almanetta, gentle Almanetta, Almanetta for Manischewitz wine. Try some after dinner tonight. It's delicious. Cream Almanetta from Manischewitz Wine Company, New York. One word describes the Omana Touchmatic 2 Radar Range Microwave Oven. Automatic. 
So automatic it lets you cook the way you're used to. The automatic temperature control system assures you a medium rare setting will give you a medium rare roast every time. And if the family's late, a Mana Touchmatic 2 radar range will automatically hold food at serving temperature without overcooking. A Mana radar range lets you cook fast, cook slow, even change speeds automatically as you cook. A Mana Touchmatic 2 radar range, the microwave oven you'll choose automatically. In Worcester, Massachusetts, officials report that a 68-year-old school bus monitor who died in December of infection was the victim of a bite from a 5-year-old student. Cyril Nickerson was admitted to a Worcester hospital at the end of last year, complaining of partial paralysis and back pain. Eighteen days after being bitten, he died of bacterial endocarditis, infection of the lining of the heart. No action, obviously, to be taken against the child. I'm Jerry Landay, CBS News. <laughs> Whether you're insulating, refinishing, or just doing a little work around the house, WFAA has the man with the know-how for doing it right. Al Carroll, the super handyman. Now you can meet Al in person and get the tips you'll need for springtime chores this Saturday at Phillips Lumber Company. 110 Broad Street in Cedar Hill from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. WFAA is going to be broadcasting live, so be sure to stop by and say hello to the super handyman Al Carroll from WFAA News Talk 57. Hello, this is Gary Copeland, the Hi-Fi Doctor, inviting you to join me every Saturday and Sunday from 5 to 7 p.m. for some sound advice about your sound system. It'll be a lot of fun, so join me, the Hi-Fi Doctor, every weekend on WFAA News Talk 57. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Here's a preview. There's nothing else in a briefcase. Just money. No papers? No identification. That's five thousand dollars in each pack, and it's forty pack. Honey, that's two hundred thousand dollars. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Wow! Look at all the stereos and the great prices. It's just what I've been looking for. Consider, if you will, this young man searching for the stereo he's always wanted at a price he can afford. In this case. He's at Worldwide Stereo, and little does he know, he's just walked into the Twilight Sale. This Twilight Sale does not exist in your imagination. You've got until midnight Friday and all day Saturday to get the stereo or separate you've always wanted at tremendous savings like this. A Marantz 1515 AM FM receiver, a BSR automatic turntable, and a pair of Omega Lab 1000 speakers, all for only $279. Save $300. See the weekend guide in the Dallas Morning News for more. Seeing's believing at the Twilight Sale, going on this week weekend only at these worldwide stereo centers in wood at lovers lane garland road at jupiter and at kmart plaza in garland this is cicely tyson it's amazing how we take for granted those who serve us in our workaday world those faceless people who touch our lives we're so ignorant of their existence the driver of that cab over there for example the one stopping next to the newspaper stand Hey, Stu. Huh? Be careful with those bags. You could get me all wet. Where to? Head to the airport and step on it. I'll do the best I can. Where do you cabs disappear to when it rains? We've been waiting a half hour. Hey, Stu, when's that plane taking off for Miami? 7.15. Bam! Hey, driver, step on it. We gotta make that plane. What's the matter? You could have made that line. Hey, buddy, I'm not looking to get in an accident. Are you doing this on purpose? Because we're in a hurry? Well, you just blew your tip. Of all the New York cabbies, we got to get Mr. Careful. Look at that. The cab hasn't fully stopped at the airport, and they've got the door open and one foot on the ground. I'll take care of the cab, Stu. You bought the drinks. $14.80? Here's $15, and you can keep the change. Creeps. Surrounded by traffic, Lumerino's taxi looks no different from any other. A few dents, some scratches, the need of a good paint job. But there's one big difference. One of his last two passengers forgot his briefcase. 
Lou Marino doesn't know it yet, but that briefcase is stuffed full of money. And that's only the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, An Honest Man by Joyce and Stanley Director. Our stars, Joe Maross and Mary Jane Croft. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where value is your byword. Sears where America shops for value. It's tea time at Sears Budget Shop. Why? Because we have solid pull-on pants in tiny, typical, and tall sizes that fit you to a T. Team up the pants with a terrific coordinating top. Short sleeves with yoke front, the top comes in tempting spring solids and prints. These tops and pants are terrific, easy-care polyester knits. So try them soon. They're great at coffee time or afternoon tea. In the budget shop at most larger Sears retail stores. Winter's leaving, all right. Leaving your lawn a mess. Sears Lawn Cleanup Sale to the rescue. Save 25% on strong Permanex trash containers. 32-gallon size, now $14.99. Save a dollar on Bagzilla trash bags. And feed your lawn Sears Superfine Lawn Food. Now a dollar off. It's just $4.99 for our 5,000-square-foot coverage bag. Save $3 on a drop or rotary spreader. Sears Lawn Cleanup Sale. At most Sears retail stores. Sale ends March 24th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Put together a whole wardrobe with the classic collection separates at Sears. Now you can buy the pants to a suit, the vest to a suit, and the jacket to a suit separately. So every well-tailored piece of the outfit you buy is geared to your size and build. You can create a more casual look with solid color blazers and patterned slacks, or patterned sport coats and solid color slacks. The colors coordinate to let you mix and match. Now that's style, sense, and satisfaction. The classic collection at most larger Sears retail stores. Our cab driver, Lou Marino, leaves his last passengers at the airport and drives the long road home. The rain lets up a little, but the streets are puddled, and the rhythmic swipes of the windshield wiper are hypnotic. Lou finally gets home and leaves his cab in the garage, still unaware of the briefcase left in the back seat. Kathy, I'm home. Hi, honey. Oh, don't hang your coat in the closet. It's all wet. It's only water. Give it to me. How's Bobby? You in bed? Yeah, he's not any better. The medicine just doesn't seem to be working. I mean, you can't fix things till you know what's wrong. And Dr. Grossman doesn't know what Bobby's got. Maybe we'd better find another doctor. He's a good doctor. We're lucky to have him. He'd be the first one to tell us to go to another doctor if he felt he couldn't help Bobby. You know that. You're right. He's my kid. I, I can't help it. I worry about him. There's no need. You just like to worry about everything. Well, I got plenty to worry about. The, the cab. It's going to need a transmission job soon. Better get that fixed. But I still owe Joe for the brake job. So, go to a new mechanic. You see? That's solved. Hey, Pop. I'll be right there, son. I bought him a present today. I couldn't resist it. I know this is going to cheer him up. Hey, Bobby, I got to talk to you. I uh, got a problem. You do? Yeah. Maybe uh, you can help me with it. Yeah, I'll try. What is it? You see, I've got this present with me, but I don't know who to give it to. You uh, got any suggestions? Ah, oh, Pop, what'd you get me? Not so fast. This present is filled with magic. When I saw it, I said, a little voice in the back of my head said, Lou, you have to buy this for Bobby, because if there's anything that's going to get him well, it's this present. This wrapping is very tricky. There, I got it. Ta-da! Wow, there are faucet majors. Lou, who'd you say you bought that for? Well, don't look at me that way. I bought it for my son. <laughs> the best son in the world. 
For a son who loves his father so much that he's going to give him visiting privileges. <laughs> you got it. I thought so. Hello? Just a second. Bobby, you feel like talking? It's your friend Jimmy. Sure. Come on, Lou. I think I heard your stomach growling. Hi, Jimmy. Listen, uh, while you're getting the food on the table, I'm going to run out in the garage and clean out the cab. Well, what do you got there? Well, what does it look like? It looks like a briefcase. What are you so touchy about? Because it belongs to a couple of creeps that busted my chops on the way to the airport. What's in it? I don't know. I didn't look. <laughs> <laughs> Those big shots on their way to Miami to close some big business deal, and this briefcase is probably filled with all their important papers. Serves them right. Oh, they must have really given you a hard time for you to be so upset. Here, give it to me. You sit down and eat. I'll look through it and see if I can find out who they are. <gasps> Lou! Lou! What is it? Oh... What is it? Money. Look at all that money. Oh, but is it real? Uh, I'm no expert. But it sure looks real to me. Oh, uh, it feels real. There's nothing else in a briefcase. Just money. No papers? No identification? I, w I wonder how much there is. There's got to be at least $10,000 here. It's five thousand dollars in each pack, and it's forty pack. Honey, that's two hundred thousand dollars. Mom, mommy, I don't feel so good. Yes, I'm here, Bobby. What's wrong, honey? Mom, it's my stomach. It it hurts more than usual. Oh, don't worry, honey. I'm going to call Dr. Grossman. Dr. Grossman, please. Yes, I know it's 3 o'clock in the morning, but this is an emergency. Mrs. Catherine Marino. Oh. Hang on, Bobby. Dr. Grossman, this can't keep going on. He's in terrible pain. What am I supposed to do? Okay. Okay. What's going on? We gotta get dressed. We're taking Bobby to the hospital again for more tests. Need a shirt to go with a skirt? Enhanced new pants make the best of a vest? See the ladies. Tailored short sleeve shirts at Sears. Pointed collars, placket front, with bottoms cut straight. That's great. Classic shirts that are easy to wear. Polyester fabric makes them easy care. Solids from white to navy blue. Lots of soft tones, too. Plenty of prints. We've got them in store. They're just the thing you've been looking for this spring. Mrs. Tailored short sleeve shirts in the women's sportswear department at most larger Sears retail stores. You want to buy some radios, but time's on the same. You've got to have good feelings, you've got to trust the name. You know our reputation, remember what we said. When Sears is behind you, you come out ahead. Sears offers you dazzling savings on crystal glass chandeliers. Save $30 on a five-light chandelier, now $59.99. Glass-encased arms, hurricane shades, prisms that dance among beaded drapes create this glass confection. You save $40 on Sears eight-light chandelier, now $79.99. Here, antique cast bronze extends gracefully to sparkling crystal glass drops. Remember, just $59.99 and $79.99. Available in most larger Sears retail stores. Sale ends March 24th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Final to the post? Not yet. 
Okay, give me the news. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can help me. I'm trying to locate a couple of guys I picked up yesterday in front of your newspaper stand uh, around 6 o'clock. Oh? Uh? They were carrying some luggage. One was tall and thin with a mustache, and the other guy was shorter and stockier. Uh, they, they were wearing suits. You know them? What'd they do? Nothing. You a cop? No, I'm a cabbie. They run on uh, out on you without paying? No. Then what do you want them for? That's a long story. You know them or not? I don't know. It was raining, you know. I, I don't look up when it rains. Uh, maybe it was those guys came out of the pool room over there. And then again, a lot of people hang out in doorways when it rains. Maybe they were just hanging out under the doorway. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. and Mrs. Marino, but I have to check Bobby's pulse. You want us to leave? Oh, no, no, that's all right. You can stay. But you just did all that stuff. We have to do it every half hour, Bobby. So, uh, Bobby, uh, you, you, you look better. <clears throat> Nurse, what's that contraption hooked up to my son's owner? He's on intravenous feedings. Okay, Bobby, that's it for now, and I'll see you in a half hour. Goodbye, Mr. and Mrs. Marino. Gee, Papa, I'm sorry. What are you sorry about? Well, for being sick and being put in the hospital, this is going to cost you a lot of money. Now don't you worry about that. We got insurance. That'll take care of everything. You just concentrate on getting well. You know our insurance isn't going to cover everything. Uh, what about the money? What do you mean? You know what I'm talking about. Don't play dumb with me. It's not ours. We gotta give it back. Still got it, haven't you? Of course. I put it in a way in a safe place, our safe deposit box. And I'm still looking for those guys. I'll find them. Well, maybe you won't. Have you thought about that? <laughs> Told you all I know. If you don't want a table, don't bother me. I'm busy with paying customers. Now that'll be six fifty. Is there anybody else I can talk to? Nope. There's only me. I run this pool hall all by my lonesome. Well, why are you so sure you never saw those guys? Just look around you. What do you see? Do they look like Wall Street types? No, they look more like rejects from Forty Second Street. That's why I'm so sure. <laughs> I didn't keep you waiting too long, Kathy. Oh, where's your husband? He's working, Dr. Grossman. I can tell him whatever you tell me. So, what's wrong with Bobby? He's got ulcerated colitis. That doesn't tell me anything. Well, to put it simply, the mucous membrane of his large intestine is inflamed, and the way to fix it is by operating. An operation? Is that serious? How did he get it? Did he catch it from somebody? We what? really don't know what causes it, but... One of the possibilities may be emotional stress. Emotional stress? It's common among people our age, but very rare for an 11-year-old. Now, I have to tell you there's some danger in the operation because of Bobby's age. Because his intestine is very small, it makes the surgery difficult. Now, he'll have to be in the hospital for at least three weeks for post-operative care. I've already contacted Dr. Harold Stockwood and told him about Bobby. He's the best surgeon for this operation. Kathy, I don't want to rush you, but I'd like to tell Dr. Stockwood to plan on doing the operation sometime next week. His schedule is very busy, and he needs at least five days' notice. Well, I have to discuss this with my husband. Oh, of course you do. But what I need to know now is, can I tell Dr. Stockwood to schedule Bobby? I said I have to discuss this with my husband. Good. Good. Can you call him on the phone? Is, is there any way you can get hold of him? What are you doing to me? No. I'm not going to tell my husband about our son over the phone. You know, you're really something. For three weeks, you didn't know what the hell he had. Now, all of a sudden, it has to be done immediately. Everything has to be done immediately. Well, if you took three weeks, I'm taking 24 hours. I'll let you know tomorrow, doctor. <laughs> Dr. Starkwood. Well, he's supposed to be the best. Well, I want my kid to have the best. He will, Lou. I don't understand it. Emotional stress. He's a happy kid. Well, you know, we got problems. Everybody's got problems. Well, he's a sensitive boy. 
Maybe he picks up on our problems and gets affected by it. You, you think so? I don't know. Doctors don't know. They say it's just a possibility. Bobby's going to get better. Don't forget, they couldn't cure him till they knew what was wrong with him. Everything's going to be fine. You'll see. Um, tell me, what, what's happening with the money? Find the guys yet? No. I uh, can't figure it out. There's, there's nothing in the newspapers about anybody losing money. Gee, wouldn't it be great if you found them and they said, Oh, we don't need the money. We're just petty cash. Why don't you keep it? Don't count on it. That doesn't sound like the guys I had in my cab. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Shirley, your furniture looks just fantastic. Why, thanks, Jane. I wish I had such good luck. Every time I buy something new for my home, it somehow just doesn't look right. And I don't know what to do about it. Well, why don't you do what I did? What? I had the designers from Contemporary Collections come out to my house and help me pick out the furnishings that reflect me and my lifestyle. Contemporary Collections? That's right. At Contemporary Collections, their furniture is the finest quality in workmanship and materials. Some of it's even imported from Italy. I see. See, it's a classic, kind of modern design. Yes, and it's durable, so it'll last for years. Contemporary Collections has unique and distinctive pieces. It's furniture you won't see just anywhere, like your dining room suite. And the sectional sofa in the living room. And your wall decorations and the mirror in the hall. All of the... Visit their showroom and see designs for today's lifestyle at Contemporary Collections, 12,801 Midway Road, one block south of LBJ. Well, I'm the kind of man who does things right. I take pride in my work and enjoy my life. And when I use cement mix, I use Sacrete, yeah. Sacrete will set a post and build a patio. I made a barbecue pit and I was ready for more. So I fixed the cracks in my driveway yesterday. I made a neat flower box, a brand new step, and I fenced off my yard with just a little help. So when I think cement mix, I think Sacrete. You just add water. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Each year, medical quackery takes many dollars from unsuspecting people, as well as endangering the health of innocent victims. Watch out for the telltale signs. There are several different types of quackery to look out for. For example, false claims for drugs, food fads, and unnecessary food supplements, as well as fake medical devices. Remember that their promoters are much more interested in making money than in preserving health. Quackery and drugs include so-called cures for arthritis, rheumatism, baldness, and pills that supposedly melt away fat. Drug quackery can be very dangerous in that the victim is sometimes cut from seeing a doctor and obtaining life-saving treatment. The food quack attempts to convince the dieter that vitamin supplements are the only way to a thinner body. And once again, only a doctor should diagnose a vitamin deficiency and write up the necessary prescription. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. Wouldn't it be great if you found them and they said, Oh, we don't need the money. We're just petty cash. Why don't you keep it? Don't count on it. That doesn't sound like the guys I had in my cab. I don't want you to think I'm crazy, but I have to give this money back. I, I, I guess it was the way I was brought up. Well, my parents weren't Bonnie and Clyde either, you know. Oh, I'm sorry I made it sound like that. It's, it's just that I've got this fight going on inside me. Sometimes I think I'm the one that's crazy I, for wanting to give the money back. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Maybe you can help me. Well, that's what I'm here for. Were you working Wednesday at 7 at night? Uh, uh what, yeah. Uh, great. Listen, do you remember a couple of guys who were late? That They were running to catch that plane that night to Miami? Huh? One was tall and thin with a mustache, and the other one was shorter and, and heavier. It's very important that I find out who they are. You see, I need to get in touch with them as soon as possible. Are you kidding? You know how many people I see every day, and they're all late. They're all running to catch planes. Besides, I can't give out that kind of information. 
Um, look, you seem like a nice man, but uh, I don't know. You could be a killer or a sicko. <laughs> You don't have to tiptoe. I'm up. Put the light on. I didn't want to wake you. Where were you so late? Working. Why didn't you call? Because I picked up one fare after another. I was on a roll. I, I didn't want to break it. Well, Bobby's operation is set for tomorrow. There's papers on the night table for you to sign. Give me your consent. I've already signed. Okay. So, did you give the money back? No. I thought so. What does that mean? How long is this game going to go on, Lou Marino playing detective? If you really wanted to give the money back, why didn't you go to the police? They got a lot more experience in playing detective than you have. Because it's my responsibility. I found it and I'll give it back. Hey, give me a chance. If I don't find them, I'll call the police. They may not buy your story about why you waited so long to inform them. at the same time. When Lou and Kathy Marino brought their son Bobby here several hours ago, it was reassuring. Now, with time past, it's getting frightening. What's taking them so long? Maybe something went wrong. They told us it could be dangerous. Would you shut up, please? I'm nervous enough as it is. Operations take a long time. Somebody should come out and let us know how it's going. This waiting is killing me. Lou... Please, sit down and stop pacing. I love that kid. If anything happens to him... Nothing's going to happen. Everything's going to be fine. If I could only change places with him, if, if it only was me. He's so young to know so much pain. Come on. You want to go get a cup of coffee? Do you good. No. How about something stronger? What? Like a drink? Yeah. Maybe that'd help. Hey, Doc, what's going on? Nobody tells us anything. I, I just got here. I'll go and see if I can find out anything. Nobody cares about us. They come and they go. Everybody's got some place to go but us. Dr. Grossman comes, but he goes, and he never comes Dr. back. He'll be back when he has some news for us. If we had money, they wouldn't treat us like this. Yeah, you got to be rich to get decent Dr. treatment. Fletcher, Maybe we Fletcher, should tell him about that $200,000 we got, huh? I shouldn't have let you have those drinks. I thought it'd help you relax. Oh, I'm relaxed. Hey, you know something? Those guys I picked up were drinking, too. Yeah, that's right. He said, I'll get the cab. You paid for the drinks. What are you talking about, Lou? You're not making any sense. Uh, sorry I didn't get back sooner, but I'll bet you can tell how it went by my smiling face. He's fine. Oh, doctor. Look, Bobby's still under sedation, so you can't see him till tomorrow. Oh. So why don't you go home and get some rest? There's nothing you can do here. Oh, doctor. Hey, doc. There were times I didn't think such nice thoughts about you, but, but right now, I want you to know that I think you're a great guy. How about a drink? Hey, hey, hey. Take it easy, fella. Oh, it's so dark in here. Well, you'll get used to it. What are you going to have to drink? Drink? Uh, how about a ginger ale? This place get busy on Wednesday around 6? Huh? You see, I'm trying to find a couple of guys that may have been here last Wednesday. Last Wednesday? Oh, who remembers? Please, try. It was raining really hard that night. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, look, friend, I don't want any trouble here. Oh, no, 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 you got it all wrong. I'm a cab driver. I picked those guys up outside, and they left something in my cab. I just want to return it, that's all. Okay. Uh, hey, Maggie, come here. Maggie's our cocktail waitress. She should hear this. Hear what? Now, this man's a cab driver, and a couple of guys left something in his cab. He thinks maybe they were in here. 
right? That's right. Sorry, I can't help you. I was off last night. Oh, it wasn't last uh, night. It, it was la uh, last Wednesday, the, the night it rained. Okay, I'll give it a shot. So what they look like? Well, one was tall and thin with a mustache, mm -hmm. and the other was shorter and heavier. They also had a few pieces of luggage with them. Oh, uh, no. No, I don't remember. I do. They kept putting their bags out, so I trip over them. Yeah, that sounds like something they do. You know who they are? Not really. I mean, they work for some real estate company or Wait a second. They gave me one of their business cards in case I hear of anybody who's looking to buy or sell property. Said they'd give me a finder's fee. Where did I put it? I remember throwing it in my pocketbook. Is this it? No. Wait a minute. Here it is. <laughs> I help you? Yes, I'd like to see Hank Pritchard or Stuart Bronker. Well, do you have an appointment? No. Well, I'm sorry. They're not here right now. Uh, can anybody else help you? No. Uh, when do you expect them? Mm, in about an hour. I'll wait. Okay. If you'd like, you can sit at that empty desk over there. Oh, oh, wait. Um, Hank, uh, there's somebody waiting to see you. How can I help you? Uh, you can't, but I can help you. I'm usually good with faces, but I don't know yours. How are you with money? Uh, missing any? The cab driver. You found the money. Where is it? On the floor next to you. Boy, you're a sight for sore eyes. You don't know what I've been going through. I can't believe this. You're here. The cops told me to forget about it. Write it off. They said it was a lost cause. How did you find me? It wasn't easy. You won't be sorry you did this. Here, write down your name and address. My company's going to want to make sure you get rewarded. You deserve it. Hey, Bobby, you really got it made. Look at this. All your meals in bed, your own TV. When can I move in? Ah, oh, Pop. Hey, tell me again what he said when you return the money. Okay. Just one more time. He said, write down your name and address. My company is going to want to make sure you get rewarded. You deserve it. Gee, I wonder how much they're going to give you. Well, I didn't do it for a reward, but since they brought it up... Hey, Pop, your picture's on the TV set. Turn up the sound. What? No more will we hear derogatory terms in reference to our New York cab drivers without being able to retort, what about Lou Marino? The ever-increasing bad feelings that have developed towards New York and its people have been halted in its tracks by the actions of our Brooklyn cab driver. To Mr. Marino from all New York, I want to say, we love you and we thank you. Hey, Pop, you hear that? You're a hero. You saved New York. Uh, Bobby, don't believe everything you hear. Why not, Lou? I believe it. <laughs> around our house. I wonder what's going on. Uh, we'll find out as soon as we park the cab. Uh, I hope nothing's happened to any of our neighbors. Mrs. Miller, what's going on? There he is. There's that jerk. Hey, dummy! Hey, you dummy! You, what is this? Let's get inside the house. Stupid freak! Get... Here's a couple of meatloaf sandwiches and a thermos of coffee in case you get hungry. What you really mean is don't stop and spend any money on food. Why should you when we got plenty in the house? I got it. Hello? Is this the man I saw on TV, the big celebrity? This is Joe from Joe's Automotive. Hi, Joe. Look, I know you're not calling to congratulate me on my television debut. I uh, don't have any money for you right now. Probably in a couple of weeks. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll be able to give you some. What do you mean you don't have any money? Nobody in their right mind gives back $200,000 when they don't even have enough money to pay for a brake job. Hey, just a second. It's my business that I gave that money back. Well, it's my business that you owe me money. I got bills of my own to pay. Didn't you get a reward? Not yet. Well, when you get it, I want my money. You'll get it. Look, Joe, I'm not leaving town. I'm going to be in New York the rest of my life. I can't wait that long to get paid. Hey, man, I said I'm going to pay you. Now, just get off my back. Oh, here I 
I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The power spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <laughs> Solid as Sears. Here's looking at you, kids. From Winnie the Pooh. Spring, when a kid's thoughts turn to fancy, and a mom's thoughts turn to Winnie the Pooh and Sears. Dressy dresses and vested suits. Soft, easy care fabrics in lots of spring colors and styles. Kid sizes 3 to 6X at most Sears retail stores. Sure quality, pure delight. From Winnie the Pooh and Sears. Who else? Here's looking at you, kids. From Winnie the Pooh. Here's looking at you. From Winnie the Pooh. Here's looking at you. What would it cost to replace your car's muffler, including installation? Oh, I'd say about $50. No, wait, $45. It'd be around $30. Just about $40. The aluminized Sears muzzler is only $19.99. That's half of what I guessed. It's hard to believe. On a Cadillac? That's a terrific price. With installation included. Yes. Should have known it. Sears. The muzzler, just $19.99 installed. Clamps if needed, $0.99 cents each extra. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Cicely Tyson again And here's the concluding act Of An Honest Man Lou, I got the mail Woody, there's a lot here Probably all bills No Where is it? What's taking them so long? They should have sent your reward by now Call them I can't do that. How would it look? Hello, remember me? Where's my money? Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, at least you got some fan mail. Dear Mr. Marino, this is the first time I have ever written to a person that I did not know. But you have moved me so much that I had to take pen in hand and put my feelings on paper. Oh, that's nice. I was having dinner while watching the news, and after your story appeared, I lost my appetite. What? That's what she said. How could you be so stupid as to give back the money? A lot of real estate companies have been ripping off the public for years. And finally, when a member of the public gets a good shot at them, he does nothing. He returns their money. You'd have been smarter if you had given it to charity or to people who could have put it to better use since you chose not to keep it yourself. Oh, she goes on and on. Maybe I'd better open up another letter. Oh. Well... Uh, I don't think I'm going to read you this one. The language is a little sickening. In fact, I don't know why I'm reading it. I'll get it. Mrs. Marino? Yes? Who is it, Kathy? Uh, Mr. Marino, my name is David Hoffman. I'm a reporter with CBS News. Sure, you're on TV. Close the door, Kathy. Please, Mrs. Marino, Mr. Marino, don't lock me out. It's important that I tell your side of the story. Let me tell people what's happening to you, the terrible things you've been going through. Listen, if you want to help me, you'll get off my back. The public forgets, but you've got to give them a chance to forget. Look, i got to work. I've got to make money to support my family. I can't do that until you stop making me a celebrity. Please? Please, just leave me alone. Go pick on the president. <laughs> Where'd you go? To get the mail. Enough with the mail. Oh, look. We got it. We got it. Oh, Lou, hey, hurry up. You open it. It's your reward. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, great. This is sure going to take care of all our bills. Let me see. $200. Those creeps. Those cheap, sadistic creeps. Easy. Easy, honey. Oh. Don't, don't, don't let it get to you. This, this waiting has been ridiculous. I've got to get back to work. I've got to start bringing some money into this house. Some reward. But you can't go out and drive. People will recognize you. I'll wear my fishing cap and sunglasses. Don't worry. Nobody will know me. Besides, I need it. I need it, you know, to get back behind the wheel. I miss it. <laughs> You can't sleep? No. I get hungry. 
Feel like talking? It's late. Go back to sleep. I'm okay. You know, if something's bothering you, I wish you'd talk to me about it. I'm your wife. I love you. I'm here. I'm here to listen, to help. Don't carry it all on your shoulders. This is a partnership. 50-50. Not 80-20. <sighs> I was just thinking when I was a kid. I used to go to the movies on a Saturday afternoon. How the good guys in those pictures... The guys who caught the crooks and saved the dam from busting always ended up living happy ever after. I tell you, Kathy, if those guys in those movies were in the real world today, they sure have their work cut out for them. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Marino. Uh, Bobby's not in his room right now. He wanted to take a walk to stretch his legs. Be back in a couple of minutes. Why don't you just go and wait in his room? Thank you. Excuse me, nurse. Yes? Uh, can you tell me why the Marinos are here in the hospital? I go over to them myself, except I don't want to intrude in case they're going through something personal. Oh. Well, you see, their son Bobby had to undergo a serious operation, but everything's just fine now. Hmm, uh, what kind of operation? I know you... You're David Hoffman from the news. I watch you all the time. Uh, thank you. Now, could you give me some information about the Marinos? Oh, well, I don't think I'd better. You see, we have strict orders not to talk to reporters about the Marinos. Can you tell me who performed the operation? Oh, I guess I could tell you that. The surgeon was Dr. Harold Stockwood. <laughs> What's the matter, Lou? You seem down. I'm just thinking about how I'm going to pay for all this. Oh, come on. Let's not worry about that now. Bobby's fine. He's coming home. That's the important thing. If need be, I'll go out and get a job. I can still carry a mean tray. I don't want you to have to go back to work. You should be home, taking care of Bobby. Well, I mean, when he's bed and goes back to school. I can try to get some part-time work, maybe lunches. It won't be forever. Just for a while till we get straightened out. I wasn't brought up where my wife had to work. Damn! Okay. Okay, I'll level with you. We sure could use the money. I, I guess I really can't afford to be proud. I'm home, honey. In the kitchen. Oh, look at you. You're all wet. Take off your clothes. Put on your bathrobe. In a minute. I want to watch your news. And so there will only be a 10% chance that the rain will continue through tomorrow. And now it's time for an update on our Brooklyn cab driver, Lou Marino. Oh, no. Not again. You want to turn it off? Honesty is the best policy. A lot of us were taught that. Not many of us practice it, but we were taught it. I hear stories about what's happening to our honest Brooklyn cab driver, Lou Marino. It hurts me. It angers me. It frustrates me. All he did was what we were all brought up to do, to give back what wasn't ours. And yet there are people out there who feel a need to punish him, to hurt him, to destroy him. We have found out that just after Mr. Marino returned the money, his only son, 11-year-old Bobby, underwent major surgery. It was a very dangerous operation that he thankfully recovered from. And still, Lou Marino returned the money because it was the right thing to do. He could have used it for hospital bills. He didn't. He still owes a lot of money to a lot of people. We should be proud of a man like Lou Marino, a man who... Lou, why'd you turn it off? He's right, Lou. <laughs> You look like you're ready to go. You all packed? Yep. Where's at your bag. In my room. Did you remember your toothbrush? Yeah. Good. Oh, by the way, your friend Jimmy called. He's coming over to visit you this afternoon when he gets out of school. Great. He's bringing all your back homework assignments for you to get started on. Mm. Come on, let's get going. Ah, oh, didn't I 
That smells great. What? Yeah. Why the hospital smells so yucky? <laughs> oh, no. Is that car honking at me? Yeah, Pop. The guy's waving at you. Oh, no. Not now. Hey, are you Lou Marino? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. Yes, you are. And that's your wife and kid. Hey, I just want to tell you I think you're a great guy. Huh? Well, thank you. That was really a very nice man. He had great taste. My pop's the best. Hey, you two better stop that. You're going to give me a big head. Bobby, go in your bedroom, put on your pajamas. Then you can come out and have a piece of homemade chocolate cake. Oh, boy. Lou, you want some cake with coffee? Sounds good. I got it. Mr. Marino, I got a lot of mail for you today. <laughs> it wouldn't fit in your mailbox. Hi, Ruby. Hello, Mrs. Marino. Where do you want me to put it? Well, I guess you can put it on the dining room table. Oh. Is that all for us? Oh, it can't be. It's all for you. Uh, to take it back. Tell your bosses we've moved and I didn't leave a pouring address. Look at all that mail. <laughs> I got to go. I'll see you tomorrow. I hope not. Don't people get tired of writing eight letters? No, Bobby, I don't want you reading any of that terrible stuff. Ah, oh, Pop. Wait a second. What was that that just fell out of that envelope? Twenty bucks. Look, the letter says, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Marino, please accept what little I can afford and use it to your best advantage. I only wish I could send more. Well, look, there's more money in this envelope. Well, what's going on here? I guess people want to help us. Well, that's very nice of them, but we don't know them. We can't accept it. We have to return this money. Pop, all these envelopes are filled with money, and the letters say they want you to keep it. I can't. Now, don't mix up those letters with the money you took out. We want to make sure the nice people get back the right amount. <laughs> you can't do that, Lou. That's so funny. Why can't I? Because the people were smarter than you. They didn't put on any return addresses. That's right, Pop. Even Colombo couldn't find them. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, I want all the advice I can get. So when Mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators... They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. The room held several Sears brass plated lamps. One switched on. The finely plated antique satin shade illuminated the furniture softly. Another lamp turned on, and another. The patio doors blew open. The green brass plated lamp nearby, with its heavy base built for stability, did not budge. The room glowed in the brassy elegance that these Sears best lamps command. Create your own hauntingly elegant moods with Sears brass plated lamps at most larger Sears retail stores. Join millions of Americans and shop the easy way with a Sears credit card. All you do to apply is call toll-free 800-526-0444. It's your entry to shopping convenience and quality merchandise. Your card will be accepted at over 3,600 Sears stores across the nation. And you can choose from over 100,000 Sears products and services. Even use it for your catalog orders. In the store or over the phone, just say charge it. Call 800-526-0444. New Jersey residents call 800-652-2777 for your Sears credit card. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. An Honest Man was written by Joyce and Stanley Director, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your hostess was Cicely Tyson. Our stars were Joe Miras and Mary Jane Croft. Also heard were Brian Miller, Stanley Director, Jerry Hausner, John Shea, Bill Zuckert, Lillian Bayeth, Byron Kane, Herb Ellis, and Paula Winslow. 
The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Get set for the boat show of the season. Frank Pillsbury's first annual spring on the water boat show starting this Friday, March 23rd and continuing every day through Sunday, April 1st. And joining with Pillsbury in this 10-day boating spectacular featuring the fabulous 1979 Sea Rays are two other great Metroplex names in boating. Boss Marine with the sensational Boston Whaler and Mercury Outboards, plus the Yacht Shop with Catalina and c, &C sailboats. Pillsbury has over 125 new Sea Rays, lake ready and set for immediate delivery with up to 10-year convenient bank financing. Bring the entire family. Take the Pepsi Challenge with the new one-calorie sugar-free Pepsi Light. Refreshments, prizes with no purchase required, special demonstrations, clinics, films, and factory reps on hand. Plenty of free parking. Open every night till dark. Come join Frank Pillsbury, Boss Marine, and the Yacht Shop. Take the Royal Inn exit off Stillens and look for the big Pillsbury sign. What's all the excitement, Bill? Well, it's your Uncle Frank Parr's annual fleet sale, kids. We're putting these red tags on all the sale cars and trucks. Me either. All of them, kids. Every new Chevy car and truck on your Uncle Frank's lot is fleet sale price with the kind of discounts big companies like Hertz and Avis get when they buy hundreds at a time. Oh. Didn't Uncle Frank do this last year? Every year since 73. This is his sixth annual national fleet sale. It's a Frank Parr original. Some other dealers have copied him, but his discounts are unbeatable. Here, you want to help put some of these red tags on? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yes, sir. It's a once-a-year opportunity for Metroplex area folks to... Hey, John, hold it. Uh, not that one. That That's my truck. He said everyone on the lot. Yeah, but I mean... Tonight, the one... Vince, somebody just bought it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Your best buyers are made at Par Chevrolet. You love our Uncle Frank. Because <laughs> Uncle Frank is a good old boy. Pardon me, sir. There's been a mistake. You see, this is my Hurry in for the year's best thing. discounts on all new Chevys during the 6th Annual National Fleet Sale at Frank Parr Chevrolet in Irving. What in the world happened in March? Brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. The United States Constitution went into effect in March 1789. In March 1794, Congress authorized the establishment of the United States Navy. The first U.S. Navy ship built on the West Coast, the paddle gunboat Saginaw, was launched in March 1859. In March 1876, Alexander Graham Bell sent the first complete sentence ever transmitted by telephone. The Hall of Fame for Great Americans was established in March 1900. In March 1912, the Girl Scouts of America was founded by Mrs. Juliet Lowe. All U.S. banks were ordered closed in March 1933 by President Franklin Roosevelt during the Great Depression. The first manned flight of the Apollo Lunar Module was launched into space in March 1969. What in the World Happened in March is brought to you by your local Navy recruiter who will answer your questions about Navy opportunity. Or in the continental United States, call 800-841-8000, toll free. In Georgia, 800-342-5855. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a story of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. Let's listen. I'm led to understand, Mr. Fest, that you know the island of Mondunga very well. <laughs> Just over a year ago, with 380 good fighting men, I installed the maniac who governs it now, President Andre Bocar. Some folks might say it was the only mistake I ever made. But whatever they say, I don't give a damn. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater. Get your amplifier a free checkup from the hi-fi doctor himself, Gary Kaplan, at Spring Thing. It's coming your way April 6th, 7th, and 8th in the Women's Building at the Texas State Fairgrounds. Spring Thing, the most incredible showcase of products, services, and ideas, is absolutely free to you. From WFAA News Talk 57. Sports and Talk Radio for the Metroplex. This is WFAA Dallas Fort Worth. I'm Charles Osgood, CBS News, inviting you to get a head start on the morning news with Dick Wheeler and all the news people here on WFAA. Dallas Fort Worth.